Hello and welcome to this Digital Foundry video covering a preview version of Metro Exodus, the latest game in the Metro series of games from 4A Games. Originally revealed after long speculation at Microsoft's E3 2017 conference, this is 4A Games' first large multi-platform release targeting next-gen hardware only, so this time no older assets and platforms are holding back their designs and technology. So instead of venturing back out into the Metro and its various claustrophobic underground environments, we are looking to spend lots of time outdoors in a much more dynamic and player-driven game this time around. So what does this next-gen-only focus and shift mean concretely for the series' historical high-tech 4A engine? Now since its inception, 4A Games has been pushing graphics technology to great heights, especially on PC, with its heavy reliance on real-time lighting and shadowing, post effects, and artistically well-integrated physics effects from NVIDIA, 2010's Metro 2033 put 4A games on the map as a studio which would not be afraid to have high-end features. Metro Last Light's release solidified this with an even greater usage of DX11 features such as tessellation, refined graphical presentation, and physical interaction in the environment. These PC releases stood head and shoulders above the console releases, which still looked really great in their own right. Going over the footage provided at a recent press event, it looks like 4A Games has refined and polished their art and technology, with a whole host of new effects being on display. The first thing that really caught my eye was the new scale of the playable area and the natural lighting present in the game space. The series has now seen a switch from discrete, playable linear campaign missions to a more hub-like, choose-your-own-approach style of game that was experimented with in a DLC for Metro Last Light originally. The 4A engine has always supported dynamic lighting and shadowing from the sun, but this time around it's become a central element of the rendering in many of the levels you traverse through. Even if Metro 2033 in development and on shipping technically had a hidden global illumination system in their engine, it never saw use in the original release or in Last Light's first outing on PC. Though starting with Metro 2033 and Last Light Redux, the games have now taken advantage of a global illumination system, which provides some nice bounce lighting in a number of outdoor scenes in those games. Given that scarce information we have, we know it works by using a rough voxelization of the scene's geometry, but not much more really. The footage available here of Exodus does not make this completely obvious at any point in time, and we can see some indirect lighting inside this train car here. Or on the shadow facing side of this church bell, So I think it's easy to assume here that some form of global illumination is here in some capacity, or at least something similar enough to what they've used before, which is giving some nice results. And although it is definitely missing in this demo, PC users can look forward to a ray trace accelerated global illumination pass going above and beyond what we see here and what's been done in the engine before. This will definitely add an extra layer of realism to the game's indirect lighting. Instead of a purely static skybox, Metro Exodus changes up the look of the sky with its different time of days by using various layers of clouds and colored atmospheric scattering. The furthest layer of clouds look to be a spherical rotating layer, with the middle and close distance clouds being wispy and form changing structures. With the sun moving around and the general distance of the camera here, it's hard to guess at what technology comprises them, but the clouds here at night showcase a semi volumetric appearance and feature set. They change their shape and showcase some nice self shadowing and variable density. Of course, they could just be billboard sprites for all I know, so we'll have to wait for release to get a better idea of what's going on here. Other areas concerning lighting, shadowing, and shading also look to have received a healthy upgrade in this version of the 4A engine. From discussions with developers, we know that 4A has switched over to a physically based shading art workflow and material surface representation this time around, which really, really comes through on the metals and leathers in this game. Due to the post-apocalyptic nature of the game, material surfaces never appear to be of just one type or quality. They have scratches, wear, grime, bumps, and tears etched into their surface, which really allows the new shading pipeline and model to show through, giving surfaces a rich and varied inner surface that looks to sheen properly in various lighting conditions. Glass rendering this time around also looks to be done in a different and forward-lit fashion, whereas in the old games, glass usually looked kind of unlit and out of place. So now you can see specular highlights on glass and transparent fixtures. What were things like alpha effects receiving lighting from light sources, like how this projectile gore in the scene is being lit by the muzzle flash? Ugh, how wonderfully disgusting. 
One thing that is missing from Exodus in this preview that I really hope comes back are muzzle flash shadows. They really added an intense feeling of drama to the game's weaponry in the original release of Metro 2033 and its claustrophobic environments, but have been missing on nearly all weapons since Metro Last Light, so hopefully that comes back. Speaking of rarely seen graphical effects in games, I'm curious though if one feature will make it into the final game. The original Metro Exodus trailer in 2017 showed off a graphical effect that I'm pretty sure has never even been integrated in any large scale game before, namely colored transparency shadows. Other games have had shadows from transparency effects before like Frostbite Engine games or Lords of the Fallen. This is usually done for monochromatic shadows with Fourier opacity maps, or colored shadows can be faked through static and animated projection textures. Here you can see from the original showing at E3 2017 how the glass on the gas mask here casts a colored shadow with the look of caustics in it. It's really awesome. Perhaps it was just faked then for the original trailer, but it would be really cool to see such a nice and unique rendering effect on screen in the final game. In terms of other lighting features, screen space reflections from the PC versions of Redux, Return, and Exodus, both on surfaces like the metal of your gun or on wet ground in outdoor sections. Similarly, the developers have also opted to not use planar geometry doubling for large areas of waters in the game, which would usually cover their reflections. Now water reflections use screen space reflections, which are probably cheaper, but exhibit those artifacts we have all come to know. While that is a side grade in and of itself, we at least have it now so that shadow maps can cast onto water surfaces, which looks particularly nice. And in this PC footage at least, the shadow maps in general look to be nicely filtered and are not blocky or stippled. Generally just great looking stuff here in terms of lighting and shadowing. It may be a bit hard to find in the footage provided, but volumetric lighting does return as it has always been a series staple, something the first game used to a heavy degree to emphasize the smoky, dusty, and poorly lit corridors of the Moscow Metro. I'd be curious to know though if they switched over here to a more modern, voxelized solution, which would work with an arbitrary number of light sources, or if they're still using a per light ray march version like in the previous games. Sadly, the footage available does not make any firm conclusions possibly here, but hey, we at least know what to look for when it's there in the future. One aspect that I absolutely adored in the original release of Metro 2033 back in 2010 was its per object motion blur. Probably owing to performance considerations, it was missing in the Redux console re-releases in 2014, but it's back here with a vengeance this time. Per object motion blur in this PC footage sports a rather nice sample count with smooth gradients and feathering, and it even applies to the hand and weapon view model this time around, where it was always strangely missing in the original and last light releases of the games. It really emphasizes those nice hand animations the games have and the general weight of each trigger pull and each reload. Curiously though, that motion blur does not apply to shell casings ejected from the gun. I'm not sure why. As Doom 2016 has shown, that looks wonderful, so maybe that can make its way in at some point still during development. Much like the games in the series before it, Exodus looks to make heavy use of height map based displacement for surface detail. In other words, it either makes use of tessellation or parallax occlusion mapping. It cannot be said with 100% certainty of course because that requires more testing to narrow down the technique in use, but many surfaces in the demo sport wonderfully rounded silhouettes or just general extra jutting out features like micro details and added depth. It is especially evident on much of the game's brick texture work as can be seen here. Likewise, the model detail in general is wonderfully well done this time around with scarcely a polygonal edge being visible on hand and weapon models. The general density of the meshes really makes those ramshackle garage made weapons come to life. I'm particularly fond here of how many more objects and interactions are diegetic this time around, with Artyom physically taking out maps and using his backpack. Hopefully this makes a Ranger hardcore playthrough where there's no UI and HUD that much more viable, as it looks like they considered it this time more inclusively in the interactive design. This increased realism in object rendering crosses over to characters this time around as well. The original games were gorgeous on release always, but character facial modeling and facial animation was always the main letdown in the visual makeup of those games. Of course, those Models with faces covered up by gas masks or mutants in general were always awesomely detailed and animated, just superbly. It was just human faces that tended not to be as well rendered as other aspects of the game. Luckily this time around, it looks like they have improved in that area as we get brief glimpses at Anya's face and the animation on her face, although it doesn't look to be synced up necessarily with the audio or animated in a completely convincing manner. That electric tower. That electric tower. 
An electric tower. I would imagine they've done mocap like they've done for all their games before, but perhaps without facial performance capture, hence the discrepancy here. So character faces look better than in the previous games, definitely, but are still not reaching those heights of other contemporary games. Beyond these rendering aspects, much is still yet to be seen regarding the physical simulation in the game, as in the physics. The original Metro games on PC took advantage of Nvidia's GPU physics in an awesome way, making it so smoke curled, moved around, and reacted to physical forces. Or how objects broke apart and became damaged, like character armor. So to what extent this is returned is not completely revealed in the footage provided yet here from the preview event, but we already know a couple things from the original trailer and this one. Fire propagation appears to be in the game right now. As you can see in this scene, how fire started earlier in the combat starts to spread as Artyom moves throughout the room. And going back to the original trailer from E3 2017, we can see how the grass sways in the wind and how explosions and movements displace tons of particles which are tossed into the air as Artyom fights the bear. We can also see how the bear and this watcher mutant here have pretty convincing physical simulation on the rough patches of fur they have granting great secondary motion to those animations. A tiny physicalization detail that I'm surprised has yet to be hyped though at all is rather well hidden in this provided footage. When Artyom is engaging with these former human mutant types in one scene, you can clearly see how one mutant appears to have bits shot off of them as Artyom unloads into it with the AK. Before Artyom fires, you see a perfectly healthy and happy mutant. Afterward, well, there's a hole missing in this thing's belly. That's pretty neat, and it makes me wonder what other brutal dismemberment effects work we can see when we fight the game's larger mutant bestiary. Given though how the footage is not up to quality standards for running frame analysis on it, it's hard to say how the game looks to be performing at the moment, but at least we know some PC out there was capable of playing this at 4K 60fps, which is the resolution of the assets provided. We did have the opportunity though to play the game on Xbox One X and saw that it was running at what looked to be native 4K with an adaptive V-Sync with tearing when the frame render time went above the target 33.3 milliseconds. And given how the game is not releasing till quarter 1, 2019 at the moment, we can imagine that developers will be spending their time cutting corners and speeding things up to get a steady 30 FPS. So all in all, the game in its current pre-release state, as from this preview event, checks all those nice graphical options and boxes, and then some, that you can expect from a series with such a pedigree. The preview version of Metro Exodus here is definitely a step up in rendering features above its predecessors. And hopefully there are some nice rendering surprises for us in store come release day. I'm just really crossing my fingers for those muzzle flash shadows though. And with that being said, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you found it informative at all, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, or ring the bell in the corner to get notifications when Digital Foundry videos come out as soon as they do. If you want to discuss the Metro series with me, or how awesome muzzle flash shadows are, write a comment below, or follow me and Digital Foundry on Twitter. This is Alex, bidding you farewell, and auf Wiedersehen.